right, this is Yuomai here. I'm doing a podcast episode, and it, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've done one of these. And um, the reason I'm choosing to do it right now is because I kind of miss doing it. I think it's with podcast episodes, it's easier just to, you know, go for it. Rant on what I want to rant on and uh, put everything together, get the video up. Whereas if it's a video and I'm shooting myself, obviously the sunglasses, the hat, I'm going to be real with you. <laughs> the whole quote unquote disguise ain't going to go on forever. I, I did it as a stylistic thing. Partly, I thought it was kind of dope. I still think it's dope, but there's going to be a day where I probably don't do the sunglasses and the hat anymore, or I at least take the sunglasses off. But I wanted to do uh, the podcast episode and expound on my last short. So this is uh, obviously the long form video of the week, and I may do another one or two this week. We'll see what happens. But right now I'm in this motel room. I just... I just moved in here. I'll be here for a little bit. It's it's uh it's kind of a dilapidated place, somewhat I would say, but it, it's paradise. It's paradise. It's I was the situation I was living in recently required me to be in an environment with other with other forms of energy, other people. With, with energy that was contradictory to mine. One person in particular. But obviously, I'm not going to get into details on that. That's not something I need to be putting out there like that. But I tell you this, this position right now for me is unique because it's the first time I've been in a situation where I'm of a level of consciousness and understanding where I can take advantage of a living situation in which I get extensive, extensive time alone. It's been a while since I've had extensive, extensive time alone because I was married for years and in a relationship for years. I mean, I was in a relationship for over a decade, married for six years of that. And when and, and it changes things. And if your energy isn't, if someone's not on the same wavelength or y'all differ a little too much in terms of energy, as effective as you can be, and you can be extremely effective, so always do your consciousness work. It does make a considerable difference when you have extensive time to yourself or the person with you, their energy is far more aligned with yours. So... And it's not just that either. It's another point I want to mention is you, you everyone's heard the phrase success is when preparation meets opportunity. As of today, as of recently, I should say, I have far a far greater appreciation of that. Because when I first heard that, and that the first time I ever heard that 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 quote it was dude that had to be I don't know it was I don't know if I was in middle school elementary I when I first heard it I didn't really I think I didn't understand it fully because when preparation meets opportunity when I was young, I believe the thought that went through my head is when preparation meets opportunity. So if you're prepared because you've been putting work into something and working on something and opportunity arises, well, what if you don't see the opportunity? See, I think that was someone in my mind. Because I was thinking, like, let's say you practice, you, you want to be a football player, and you put a lot of time into your uh, into your game. You know, running, throwing the football, just practicing different passes, catching the ball, everything that uh, pertains to football. Uh, I've never been big into football, never played it much. I was more into basketball, and so don't know much about the sport of football. But uh, nonetheless, 
I looked at it from a perspective of if you're not, if you don't see the opportunity, okay, like you could be playing football, practice football, and what if you just never get the opportunity? No one gives you the opportunity for to be able to do something with uh, football, the type of opportunity you need. Like you never get someone who's out scouting or something like that. That's where my mind space was. That's where my head space was. But it was not something I delved into very deeply. It wasn't where a lot of my awareness and energy went in terms of thinking about it. But as I learned, got older, learned about law of attraction and a lot of other facets of life, I realized that in the preparation itself, whatever it is you're doing, that preparation is going to, it's going to rewire your mind in such a way where it is more primed to be able to see opportunity. Pick up on the little things. Like if you're really into football, you're gonna notice more things that involve football. Things such as maybe pictures of football on billboards or more commercials or more people talking about football, little keywords said here and there out when you're out and about listening to the radio, watching TV, listening to music and someone make, maybe makes a reference to a football player, you're going to notice and pick up more. So in the same way you can notice, and I believe this is a result of the reticular, reticular activating systems, I think is there's a there's a component in your mind called the reticular activating system or reticular activator. Something along the lines of that. I don't know the exact phrasing on the terminology, but I'm going to go ahead and say the reticular activating system. This allows you to recognize things that are connected to something that's familiar to you like if you buy a certain car you all of a sudden notice the same car all over the road but obviously it's not like those cars suddenly more of them just exist so if you buy a camry not like there's suddenly more camrys on the road but you notice more camrys same thing with football if you're playing football so you'll end up noticing more things related to football and that includes things that can be turned into opportunities But anyway, connecting it to my situation now. See, what's unique about the situation I'm in is the value of extensive time to yourself is absolutely incomparably astronomical, titanic, It is, time to yourself is, that's the whole motherfucking ball game. But guess what? It doesn't mean shit if you can't see the opportunity in it or if you have your intention on the wrong thing. You have the wrong intentions in life. You have a lot of time to yourself. But your end all be all of life, everything is just, I want money, 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 and more money. That time to yourself is valuable to an extent because, you know, you can use that time to better help you get money. Time for research, time to put your business plan together if you want to develop a business plan, whatever you're intending to do as far as your business. But... Time alone, especially extensive time, is infinitely more valuable if you decide to explore infinity. Because when you decide to explore infinity, and I am speaking of consciousness work, then what you consequently get, if you go deep, is... The ability to make everything happen in terms of a business, in terms of your personal relationships, in terms of your love life, in terms of your physical health, 
in terms of your creativity, your capacity to learn, just to be happy, to positively influence others. Everything gets improved. But if you take advantage of uh, your extensive alone time just for money with no with no forward looking thoughts or intent in terms of what you want to do past the point of getting made big money, then what you're going to do is set up You're going to going to set up this endless cycle, this perpetual cycle of just working, getting paid, working, getting paid. Maybe you'll have a vacation, working, getting paid. Maybe you get in a relationship, relationship falls apart, work, get paid. You get in a relationship, maybe you stay in a relationship for a long time, but it's not a happy one. And work, 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 and get paid, and this and that. And then at the end of the day, it's like I made millions and. I did some vacations. I had uh, some beautiful women and some great sex, but really, really, is, is that it? Because the trap we get involved in is the trap trap we all, so many people fall for is when they can get extensive time to themselves. If they do take advantage of it, they don't do it in the right way. It, it doesn't. They don't. They don't put their attention on the right thing. They make everything about financial success at all costs, and it is so hard once you do that to break your mind from it. Because when you put that amount of effort forth, hours upon hours of being financially successful, when you know it's just brute grunt work to get it done, and it's not necessarily in flow, maybe aspects of it are uh, as an unconscious thing, but for the most part, it's not. You get the money, you get the success, and so much of it, so much of your time has been invested in that, that the idea that that was not the way to be happy, especially if you're in your 40s or 50s or 60s by this time, the idea that that was not how you become how you create happiness in your life. That, that's like blasphemy to you because that's your identity. Your ability to create wealth for yourself is part of your identity. So what you're going to do when you're not happy with the amount of success you, you have, you're going to put more effort into getting more success, more money, more cars, more houses, boats, more vacations, more women, more clothing, more parties, more clubs, or more work, more work and drown out the voices that tell you this is not making you happy. Just drown out the voices until you die. Robert Greene speaks uh, a little bit about that in the book, 50th Law of Power. Ironically, the 50th Law of Power, which I've read uh, three times, I believe, that is... I might have read it four times. I think I might have read the physical copy three times and the audio book once. I'm not sure. But that first thing, the book is off the chart. I, I fucking love that book. But there are a couple of points I disagree with. Uh, one of the things he speaks about in terms of dealing with the fear of death and not having, not living forever is, you know, find what you love and work really hard on it so you don't have to think about dying all the time. <laughs> and that, that, that essentially sums it up but if you only knew you never die and the trick is do consciousness work and you lose a fear of death done 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 it can't be that simple right well actually actually the benefits of consciousness work being able to do it it is it, it is alarmingly simple it is stunningly simple it's shockingly simple but it is unfathomably hard simple as fuck but hard as fuck it, it just is because when you're going in you're going inside introspection you're doing this introspective work you're doing this internal work your mind will shoot every missile bullet 
piece of weaponry, everything your mind has to aim in your direction, it's going to aim in your direction. Okay, and you better not have too much um, effed up karma or effed up baggage and all this stuff going on uh, in your mind because the more baggage, the more BS you have to deal with from past mistakes and effed up wiring in terms of how your uh, mentality uh, is, <laughs> the more harmful those shots that your mind fires at you to protect the status quo of itself, the more harmful those shots are going to be, the more damaging those shots are going to be. And what's frightening about it is, is it's not just an internal thing you'll be, be dealing with. Obviously, the externals is a reflection of your internal. And if you are dealing with, if you are dealing with, If you're dealing with your reality manifesting based on what's going on inside and inside you have your mind firing its best shots to keep you in the same place, then in different ways, it's going to show up in your external reality. Certain people you don't like that you may have gotten away from at one point in your life may suddenly show up in your life. Probably won't pose a physical threat or something like that, but maybe with the phone call that makes you uncomfortable, a text message, an email, someone else, you know, references them, say, says they're asking about you. Who knows? You just pass them on the street and have an awkward, uncomfortable conversation that brings up bad memories. You see, and there, there's so much else too. you know, you could have a fear of mice or rats. Go for like a motel stead, a place that seems like it's good. And then suddenly a mouse just pops out of nowhere. Harmless, but you just see like, what the F is a mouse doing here? Stuff like that. The most difficult game you'll ever play is going to be the internal game. The most difficult game you're ever going to play is going to be the internal game. That's just what it is. But I said this was to expound on the last short I put on. Well, I, I essentially am. I'm talking about energy. I'm talking about consciousness work. I mean, I, I relate, I, I determine the language I used in the short was really around energy, but I was essentially telling everyone, do consciousness work. And uh, if someone's taking from your energy, get rid of them. Yes, get rid of them. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Rid of them. All right. Certain people are not as easy to get rid of as others. I get it. And your mind's wired to want certain people around, even the people that are not good for you. But you have to understand, even if those people aren't actually interacting with you, if they're in a dark enough space, them simply being present can make things more difficult. I'm feeling energy more profoundly than I've ever felt before in my life. And I'm, I'm able to detect better where certain energy is coming from. In the past, whenever energy changed in a room or around a certain person or group of people, 100% of the time, I would think it's, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. It's me. It's like, oh, this must be, well, why am I feeling like this? Why am I feeling like that? I'm a, you know, and then it sparks some memory, something that happened to me that's more in line with that type of energy. And, and that, that reinforces the idea that I created, that I created this uh, energy within me. I feel like this because I'm remembering something or my subconscious just you know, do something at me, but it's actually maybe someone that's nearby. I'm able to identify a little bit better now. I don't want to give myself too much credit because this is really newfound knowledge. Don't get me wrong. I've been able to, you can feel the energy of a person. I've been able to feel energy technically for a while, but I'm talking about more distinctly where I'm able to identify more quickly what person is causing me to feel a certain way and how much more negative their energy may be than another person's. I'm able to identify that quicker. This is more theory right now, speaking on my personal experience, but I, 
I, I have a theory about a couple of people I know. One of them is uh, one of the well, at least at first, I, I guess. Well, you one of them seemed seem more outgoing and happy go lucky, and the other seemed a little more subdued, but you know, good person nonetheless. But recently, I detected just based on energy alone who the actual happier or happier one is or who who is more consistently consistently vibrating at a higher level in terms of energy. This is just something that I registered uh, uh, a day or two ago. And it, it's, it's, it's so it's just very interesting because this was not this was not something that I would have been able to register a few months ago, but it's just, just like, whoa. So I'm not going to get too much into detail on that. But back to the main topic at hand, in terms of the people around you, at all costs, you, you know, if you have people who are taking from your energy as fast as humanly possible, get rid of them, get, get them out of your lives. So obviously, if it's your kids, it's a different story. You're going to have to change up something so that energy can be changed up. If your kids are of a certain age though, and maybe where they can move out by themselves, you know, then maybe try to set it up where you can get them to move out. Something along the lines of that, but definitely because your task is going to be made so much harder if you have this negative energy around you. I mean, what people suggest, what what the, what they're into, what they talk about, uh how their energy unconsciously affects you just because they're around. It has a huge effect. It really does. That's why you don't want to make excuses for it because it's, it's, it's one of the tricks that the mind does to protect itself is keep certain people around you, keep you reliant on those people. Even if it's just to, even if it's just for the sake of familiarity, people don't want to give up certain people because it's what's familiar. It's, it's uncomfortable going into unknown territory. But I, I trust me, it's important. See, the situation I'm in right now, the reason it can feel like paradise, even if I'm in some regular or <laughs> even below regular level motel, the reason it can feel like paradise is because I have no one around me fucking with my energy. And I've done a lot of work on my energy. I've been saying... Well, what did I say in that video? I said, most most important life advice you're going to ever get, and I stand by that 100%, build your energy, protect your energy. Another way of phrasing it is commit to doing consciousness work and get those who are unconscious out of your life. So that's what you do at all costs. Everything else will come together Everything as far as money, your health, happiness, love, all of that will fall behind doing consciousness work. You just have to trust, but it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. It just isn't. It just isn't. I shouldn't say that because there might be people listening that are far more gifted than me at this work, but seriously, it's not something to fuck with. Uh, you need you need to take your energy very, 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 very seriously. It won't matter what you got for yourself materially if you don't take your energy seriously. I mean, Will Smith, and he he intended so much good, and he's done so much good. Let's not act like he hasn't. But despite everything, I mean, I used to describe Will Smith as one of my favorite people. Why I stand on that now is, look, I don't want to be one of these people going on or trash Will Smith on the whole situation because there's complexity to it. People make mistakes. We'll leave it at that in terms of people make mistakes. But understand, after everything he's done and, 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 and this, this incredible role model he, he, he was and what he represented, he ended up going on stage at the Oscars and assaulting another dude for the most lighthearted joke. I'll break it down in a few seconds why it probably happened. One theory I had, though, before I touch on that is it's possible 
slight possibility, but I am not sure about this one. So I just don't know. Ego backlash, and this is something that shows up when you're really doing consciousness work. It brings out, it can bring out some of the darkest sides of you, some of the worst feelings, because it's how your mind reacts to protect itself. If Will Smith is doing like some serious meditative work and had an ego backlash moment, then that would make a lot more sense to me as to why he did what he did. But with that said, more likely is connected to his mother. We know the situation there. And uh, yes, I believe connected to Jada as well. Not saying anything against Jada. I'm not going to trash her like, oh, she's this evil wife or whatever and go on about her not loving him or something like that. No, it's simple. It's simple. It's simple. Their energy, their internal energy is in two different places. They may both have the in same intent. Well, hmm. They both have the same intent, but... It's funny because they both may be at a similar level of consciousness. Or uh, not, not too far, but that level of consciousness that they actually are at. Uh, there, there's some, look at it like this. You get two people at the same level of consciousness that are at a very low level of consciousness. I'm not, I'm not saying that's with uh, Jada and Will Smith, but let's say you get another couple of people that are at a low level of consciousness, so low that, you know, physical abuse and verbal abuse is just a common thing within their relationship. You know, the guy hits her, she hits him back. She says the worst things to him. He says the worst things to her. That's just the type of relationship it is. And then they end up breaking up and they go about their separate ways and end up in other relationships and the same problem resurfaces in each relationship. See, same consciousness attracts same consciousness, but it doesn't mean that those two unconscious people are right for each other. So what you have is a situation where Jaden will, at least in their intent, they intended to they really are putting in that work to be more conscious, but in their current level of consciousness, each of them, where their consciousness is, neither of them are in a position or at a level of consciousness where they can maintain a conscious, truly loving relationship. They're not there. They want to be there, but they are not there. They do not have the internal goods for it to put some unique phrasing on it, internal goods for it. Okay, they're not developed, neither of them are developed enough to be able to maintain that type of relationship with each other. They're just not. You can say, well, how do you know, blah, blah, blah. You're, listen, listen, I'm not an expert on this, so you could shit on the opinion all day, but that's just facts, all right? It's obvious. I mean, there's no way in hell you are meant to be together if you're going up on stage as the biggest movie star in the world is slapping some man because he made a lighthearted joke about your wife. The fact that you thought you needed to defend your wife that way means you didn't. I doubt that's what Jada wanted, at least not on a conscious level. So Will Smith was unable to read that. One red flag for the relationship. I mean, y'all been together long enough. You maybe should read that Jada probably doesn't want you to do that for being real about it. Even if she feels a way and she said to you she feels a way, I'm pretty sure she don't want you to slap him on the stage. I'm just going to take a guess. I'm going to take a guess. Okay? As far as... As far as even that desire, however unconscious it may be to jump up and do that, it says that Jada, Will Smith's woman has not had a quote-unquote loving, compassionate, non-violent influence on him. There is no woman I've... Oh, never. <laughs> there might be one. There might be two. Let me just speak too quick with those relationships were short-lived. 
there's no woman that I've been with that is not gonna, that has not created within me at a minimum, the awareness that she's not going to be cool with me assaulting some dude on her behalf for a bullshit reason. My, in my serious relationships, and if I'm being real, I've only had two really serious relationships. They were long-term relationships. Despite all our issues in these long-term relationships, and these relationships are not as long as uh, Will and Jada, by the way, but even without explicit, neither of them explicitly ever saying it, I already know that's the last thing they'd want me to do on their behalf, period. That slap someone for that type of a joke, even behind the scenes, not on camera. I already know that. I know they, they don't have to tell me. We don't have to have a conversation about it. I pick it up on how they are as people. Whatever flaws I may think they have, and obviously I have a ton of flaws too, and I'm sure if you spoke to one of them, they could point them out. But that that's indicative of y'all not being the kind of couple that can sustain that kind of relationship you want. Because in order for y'all to sustain that relationship, you, there has to be a level of selflessness on both ends. There has to be genuine love for self and love for each other. And I mean real, not just I love you because I know you and we have kids together. You have to fucking feel it. Feel it. If you feel love for a woman to a certain extent, real love, not this selfish love, let me defend my ego and mask it as I'm defending her, or even maybe I'm partly defending her or whatever. If, 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 if that happens, if that's happening, then the energy you're receiving from your, your woman isn't love. It isn't. What you're feeling for her isn't love. Real love makes you feel peaceful. You have your woman next to you. You would feel too loving to want to hurt someone. Even if someone says something you don't like. Unless, 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 unless it's really some effed up thing past a certain point. And even then, I'm the, I, Assaulting someone should be the last thing you do. Someone has to go way beyond the extreme. I mean, my personal opinion, they got to go beyond even calling your woman the B word behind the scenes for you to assault them. Like behind the scenes, if they did it as a joke, I could much more understand getting in the person's face and forcing an apology on the spot but still don't assault them because I'm beyond, I'm, I'm just not on the assault train. I'm not on that shit, man. Period. So it's... When you feel love, first thing, love is something that exists separate from a human being. It, it exists as a fabric of reality. You connect to it. You connect to it. You're not really creating love in your life, you're opening yourself up to experience the love that already exists everywhere in life. That's what you're doing. When you feel it, because trust me, I've been, I feel it more and more every day with the work I do. When you feel it, you don't need to have, be with someone to feel it. But when you do feel it, when it's real, when it's real, when you feel genuine love for someone, and that comes as a result of you feeling love for yourself and love for life, and then genuine love for them and you can appreciate them how they are. You see their infinite beauty. You're not, you, you're... <sighs> to assault someone in their presence will be to dishonor. Dishonor that love you feel for them. Dishonor the love that is them, their beauty. I wouldn't do that really with any woman I'm with that I've been with and 
the future woman I will be with because it would dishonor her. She's worth more. She's worth a better version of you and I than a version of him that gets on and slaps someone. She's worth more than that. It's not that, no, she's not worth slapping someone. No, she's worth more than slapping someone. Strength is ability to hold that anger down, man. Transmute it. Turn it into something beautiful. Will Smith could have leaned in. Assuming Jada let him. Kissed her, said you're beautiful. Period. You know, you could have just reassured her if she was really feeling away at the time, which it seems like she was. And he could have spoke uh, Chris, to Chris Rock off stage about it if, if it really was an issue like that. Even, but look, it's it's people are not perfect, so I'm only analyzing this from a standpoint of part of me just. It fascinated me. It's something because it's me just wanting to understand it. It's just such a fascinating thing. That's why I talk about it. Because when I think about it, I, I connect it, relate it to consciousness and what it means in terms of the meaning of consciousness work and meditation and infinite love and what it means to be human, what it means to be a more conscious being. That's what I, you know... That, that, that's what I'm thinking of when I, I see an incident like that. It, it just it makes me ponder these, these concepts. So when you are truly in love, when you truly love, when you are truly connected to love, it is a part of you. You don't want to hurt anyone because you're in the throes of love. You are infused with the love. You are immersed and the energy of love, you feel it. It's, it's visceral. You feel too much love in your heart to just want to inflict pain on another person. Because at the end of the day, and I is a beating a dead horse at this point, this is broken record stuff. This has happened a minute ago. The reason I'm talking about it is because I never spoke about it on the videos. Obviously, I only started this uh, YouTube channel a couple of months ago as, as in terms of putting videos out. I'm only speaking on it because I'm just expressing a point I never expressed before, but Chris Rock obviously didn't deserve that. No one deserves that. Getting slapped for that. Okay? But... Also understand this, and this is uh, this might sound a little more harsh, but we're just gonna call. And it took me a while to even come to this conclusion because it's Will Smith. It's Will Smith, so it's not easy for me to be. It wasn't as easy for me to be fair-minded and objective on this as I was would be with someone I didn't know. I was somewhat objective. I mean, I wasn't. I definitely was not for it. I did not think it was cool, but. Uh, yeah, they didn't understand. I was shocked. But with that said, <sighs> to end on the whole Will Smith thing, we just ended this piece of this podcast clip with this. Actions speak louder than words. Do not judge a man by um, their words. Judge them by their deeds or something like that. So... It's it's uh, it's easy to speak, you know, a, a ton of things and say about this and that, but actions speak louder than words. Actions, because actions actually show who you really fucking are. And don't get it twisted. It doesn't mean it's representative of your entire character. That incident with Will Smith is not representative of his entire character. We've seen Will Smith for decades. We know it's not. But he did slap someone. So that was in him to do. And it was done. So the ability to physically assault someone because his feelings were hurt 
over something that most would perceive as a BS, a, a, a weak comment, a weak, or, or a lighthearted joke, I should say. That it was in him to assault someone. That was a part of his character. However small, it was a part of his character. Not in the hypothetical, it just was. See, with everyone else who hasn't done that, it's a hypothetical. You could always say, well, everyone has in them to do. True. But there's a difference between the person who does and doesn't. Just like there's a difference between someone who talks about success and all the principles of success, but never becomes successful. That's why when it comes to money, guess what? I don't spend much time talking about money on these videos right now. And even in the future, when the money situation changes, I still won't do it much because I money's money is just so far from the end all be all. I don't want to confuse the whole issue. But with that said, I don't spend much time talking about money because as of this point, I have no real actions that have a, that, that have brought about results to give me the right to just speak and speak on it. It's meaningless. But I do, I do have the experience and the time and the effect and results in very big ways in terms of my consciousness work to spend endlessly talking about this topic and the value of spirituality and what it does to you, what it does for you. You look at my routine, eh? look at the time I put in. You can see, yeah, you, you put, you put you, there's real action behind all this consciousness talk. He's about that motherfucking shit. And I'm going to get fucking demonetized, but I can't get monetized yet because I don't got enough views, so I don't have to worry. Fuckity fuck fuck shit. Anyway, that was unnecessary. I should have not cursed like that. But ah, uh, what are you going to do? Anyway, uh, <laughs> all right. But yeah, keep, keep the wrong people out of your life. Get rid of them, uh, especially in intimate relationships. Pull one thing from, when I will not get on the Will Smith thing one more time. That's, I was bringing that up because the people you have around you, it, it matters, man. You know, it really does. And if you can't get the right people around you, have no one around you until you can. So your energy is of a place where you can get start getting the right people around you. All right. Um, yeah. And and I'll end on this. I cannot wait for everyone to uh for, for my very, very, very uh, limited audience to, I shouldn't say, uh, you know what? I shouldn't say limited audience because I say that, that's not even what I feel. I just, I'm just being objective in terms of what is, but I should, but it's gonna be far more expensive. You just gotta be, you always have to be careful with your wording and attracting things because you don't wanna attract a limited, limited audience. But what I'm saying is, I cannot wait for the day that I can introduce my audience to my cosmic match. If she's down, I'd love for you to see her, to hear her. There's complexity to that situation. She is not yet a part of my physical sphere, but she is very much real. So I'm just bring that up again because <laughs> I'm gonna point back to this video and back to other videos. And you know, when, when it happens, it'd be like, I told you, for anyone who does hear this and does think it's crazy, are you talking about, he doesn't know this guy, he's delu Okay, okay, I'm gonna point back to this. I'm gonna point, that's, that's why I wanna say it before it happens. So I could point back and be like, what, 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 I just said it, I said it here, what, 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 what were you against? Can't deny that, right? This is in the past. I didn't recently create this. All right. So this is obviously the longest by far episode I've ever done. 
partly because it's a podcast episode makes it a little easier to go on like this for numerous reasons. Anyway, I'm getting back to my consciousness work. And I am glad that I am not yet. I mean, let me phrase it like this. I am glad that I'm not at such a point yet where I would lose, where I would have lost interest in a show like Snowfall, which is obviously full of violence and a lot of unconscious acts and backstabbing and murder and drugs and money. Even though it, it does make it clear that a lot of stuff going on there just ain't cool. It ain't a cool thing to do. But with that said, I'm glad I can still enjoy some of the more violent shows that are out because I do feel myself getting to a point where there's going to be a day where A lot of stuff I do watch like that, I just won't watch anymore. I just feel one day I'm going to wake up and just not care to watch it anymore. And like, that'll be gone. In the same way I just woke up and wasn't drinking anymore. It'll be the same with uh, shows. And on the drinking thing, I mean, really woke up and stopped because it just was a need for it. That calmness, that ease is uh, perpetual. It's within me. It's permanent. It's fixed that ease you get from liquor it's actually deeper with me i would say in terms of the ease i feel but without without the drunken aspect everything in terms of my mind is enhanced i didn't lose uh i didn't end up lacking judgment i ended up being able to discern things better and being less judgmental and yeah but um, obviously ranting, this whole thing in many ways is a rant. You are my is out. Infinite love to all of you. Thank you so much for listening and or watching. Bye.